Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox. This is Unit 2, Course Motivation of the Big Data Applications Analytics course of the Data Science Curriculum. Uh, this is uh, Lesson 5, which discusses sort of the flip side of the previous uh, lesson, namely, if something goes up, something else probably goes down, because there's some cons conservation laws. And this is, uh, we have the trends of the previous lesson give you digital disruption, that uh, this digital approach to everything is uh, is dramatically increasing, but then something has to give. And here's some f a few slides on, on that, which is not very surprising, but at least quantify some trends. One thing that gives is the U.S. Postal Service, uh, which no long, which actually sort of interesting the Trends like um, Amazon, e more generally e-commerce, it is producing an increase in packages delivered. Because we're having packages delivered to us rather than going to the, the, the shopping malls to pick them up. However, <coughs> we're obviously drastically decreasing the amount of um, M uh, letters we write. And uh, so the amount of uh, mail delivered, which is mainly letters, is um, significantly decreasing. And that's this blue curve, amount of mail. And here's this red, which is the um, Postal Service's um, fiscal uh, situation. And of course, the Postal Service is presumably uh, fighting back. I see them delivering, they're actually also competing in the packaging delivery area. So the, the, this is if not necessarily the pro a problem with the Postal Service totally, but it just says the Postal service is going to change. It will deliver packages rather than rather than advertising and or um, mail and bills because all bills at least I pay nearly essentially all my bills online now. I don't have paper bills and I don't write checks much any longer and things like that. So there's some changes and that's what this particular slide uh, documents in, a, in one for a sort of highlighted uh, example here. This is a slightly uh, more, in, possibly sadder or more interesting. It comes from a book here called um, um, The Collapse of the American Shopping Mall, Black Friday, 2014. And it's by uh, this website here, Seth Lawless. And this is some um, closed mall, which is discussed in this. Uh, this fellow's a photographer and has got lots of nice pictures. And we have, as part of the uh, course, a discussion point called No More Miles, uh, which is discussing the future trends of miles. And actually, we've had that in several previous editions of this course. And there's not agreement here. I think everybody agrees uh, shopping miles will change. Uh, but they, and even if you buy things typically online, shopping miles also have an interesting social. Um, Impact and also, of course, one area which so that certainly uh, can put, says that you, shopping malls need to so focus on the, maybe the things that people go out to do, eat and uh, talk and have coffee shops and things, and not so much on shopping. Now there is this, of course, trend uh, that's two important aspects. One is that groceries are still dominantly uh, bought in brick and mortar stores, and also you could argue that um, you can't try things on as well on the internet. However, the internet companies are willing to let you buy things, try them on, and send them back. And that is actually possibly more attractive than going to the mall, when you can only try on the things they have in the mall, whereas you can try on anything. This is the long tail effect. Internet shopping gives you access to much more than, than uh, physical shops. Here is uh, from Business Intelligence. Uh, they produced uh, some quantification of the changes in, in the brick and mortar world. Barnes and Noble, Staples, GameStop, and there we have uh, fashion vendors, Gap, Abercrombie and Fitch, Aeropostal, and they're all closing 100 over 150 stores in some time period. Uh, J.C. Penney, which is certainly 
at least at some level, struggling Sears and J.C. Penney, a classic old, old-fashioned uh, um, merchandisers, which need to change, and it's not clear they will change fast enough to survive. This world is a tough world. You have to move as fast as the rest of the world is moving. You only have a short time to make that decision. Uh, that's the sort of difference about universities. Universities don't seem to have to make decisions fast. I, I don't quite know why that's true. Uh, companies certainly need to move faster than universities, and do move faster than universities. That's why companies are all using clouds, and universities are not using clouds. It's all part of this institutional change, and what drives it, and what the consequences are not changing are. And this, of course, is just a collection of us of uh, sites that people are going to instead. And um, I must admit, I don't know many of these. I'm sure there are very um, others who do more shopping will know more. I know, of course, I know eBay and Amazon and Alibaba. We certainly know that's the do that's the largest of them all, uh, do centered in China. And um, I'm sure the others are equally um, comparably interesting. This interested me from business intelligence. It's a plot of, as of until around 2020, in the future from 2001, of the fraction of retail sales in various categories just sold online. And you can see in media, sporting, and hobby, ho hobby goods is dominantly online. Here we are at 65% in 2020. Electronics, 50%. Pretty, very high. What struck me as interesting was furniture. Furniture is, and home furnishings is 30%, that's big. Clothing is high, I would expect that, because it's so easy and to buy things online. I buy my clothes online. And of course, here we have the small one, food and beverage. I don't quite know why health and personal care, maybe you really need to, to look at the real thing to, to make those decisions. But anyway, this is striking how the, and, and uh, how it, there are some very important differences in categories between the fractions purchased online. Here we have, uh, let's actually note one thing, here's 0%. So here is the online retail growth, and it's quite small, it's a few percent. Whereas the offline, sorry, this is the offline retail growth. Here is the online retail growth, well above 15%. Uh, this way, say this is zero. It's, it's a little confusing because this is minus 15%. And here are the. Um, uh, here's just the totals, and you can see the uh, green is the offline retail sales, which actually is nicely increasing, uh, but the uh, the online sales are increasing much faster. That's this fraction here. This. 15% per year, and the fraction, and notice this went negative in the in the recession time, 2009. So this says the most, a lot of the growth or the dominant growth is online, and that's why we had in the previous slide some evidence of uh, brick and mortar stores refocusing their efforts away from the brick and mortar to the online, because essentially all those stores have an online presence. I don't think it's practical for these large, um, the type of large companies not to have a major online presence. And uh, this gives some total uh, share of US retail sales. Here's the e-commerce, the red, and this is the total. And again, we have this interesting recession here. Well, it's just, in, let's just say interesting representation of the, of the uh, recession that happened in 2009. And you can see we've actually recovered above, uh, above where we are previous peak. We're at 4.5, not 4 uh, million, million, trillion. And uh, so, but again, e-commerce, of course, is growing faster. This graph being linear doesn't quite show it as well as it could do, because the number, the, the the pink things, the e-commerce are so small you can't really see its rapid increase. Um, and so here is just the 
showing there is some e-commerce, and in fact, there's lots of new startups in the e-commerce area. And um, Amazon has now a grocery department in the uh, in the uh, as part of their lineup. Uh, when I looked at it, it only offers a few things. It's not obviously so interesting to me, but uh, presumably these are all just first steps, which could get a lot bigger because there's certain and this all goes. Is all linked to online um, new modes of delivery because uh, you really, if when you want food, you tend to want it now. If you're just um, want to go and get your um, baking soda to, or, or baking powder to make your cake, uh, you probably need it uh, in, in a, now, not uh, not in a few days' time. That's why people, of course, are looking at drones and other, or even taxis for same-day delivery. Instant delivery. So there, there is a lot of um, important trends, and I think people actually. I mean, what's possible is probably relatively clear. What people will actually buy and adopt is not so clear. There's always a problem with these viral things. We know that things are changing, but it's not so obvious. For instance, I remember in '95 or so when the internet started. People never understood how it was going to get paid for, and so it was the early vendors, which included Google. So it was obvious how it's going to get paid for. It's advertising. That's what pays for everything in the U.S. That was not obvious in '95, and that was so it wasn't obvious in '95. And so often the, the 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 future can be seen, but there's some very important issues of how it gets adopted. Which are pretty difficult to forecast. Uh, I certainly didn't forecast that advertising would dominate, but I wasn't an expert on business, and so many people in business schools realized quicker than other people in technology departments that advertising would be the key to uh, driving a lot of these important technology trends. So that's the end of this little discussion of the past and the and some of the implications of. Um, these uh, digital disruption, and of course, the groceries example where the current digital dis disruption is negligible. Whereas uh, fashion sales and electronics and media and things, the digital disruption is enormous. So, thank you very much. This is the end of Unit 5. Sorry, I keep saying, of Lesson 5 in Unit 2. Thank you.